Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Hey, um, I don't bite, so it's a few seats up here in the front if you need a, a place to sit. Um, thank you guys for joining us this morning for our worship. Um, you are in for a treat this month because this month, uh, this is going to be the month of love. I will begin a special uh, study with you in the month of uh, December. Before we get started, if you don't have a uh, bulletin, uh, please get one before you leave. Uh, we have a, a few, uh, well, we have uh, uh, um, exciting um, concert on the uh, December the 18th. Um, during, throughout the service on December 18th, we have the Tamar uh, Rag uh, String Quartet from Twist gonna come here and perform for us. So that'll be neat. So if you're in town, we'd love to have you to join us on December the 18th. Um, also in our announcement, uh, please continue to keep our uh, church uh, building project. If you haven't already taken time to look at the uh, church um, presentation, uh, please keep the church building pro project in your mind. Um, church nursery, we have a nursery available for every Sunday service starting at 915 at Mac and Becky House. Please see sign up sheet over here for uh, Sundays to help if you want to help some Sunday. We don't really solicit uh, membership, but if you ever want to uh, be an official member of our local church. Uh, please see Hawkin. He have a membership um, application, and also uh, 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 he'll give you the uh, church constitution. Uh, and and membership is important because we want everybody to be part um, of uh, decision making uh, within our local church. And and you can't be part of that unless you're an official. Uh, member, uh, even though I know most of you haven't filled out the application and you're a member, but we'd love for you to do that because we'd like the, you to be part in the direction of this uh, local church. Middle School Youth Group, Wednesday, 7 p.m. p.m. And also uh, on Thursdays, we're doing a Zoom Bible study every uh, Thursday at 4.30 p.m. If you're able to join, join. Uh, and if you're not, because you're working, go back and listen to the lessons later. So that's it for our announcement. We're going to pause our study of uh, Old Testament and New Testament survey and also our first Corinthian study. We're going to postpone that because we're going to do a special study this month and it is the uh, month of love. All right. So if you will, um, open your Bibles to first John chapter four. First John chapter four. So today we're introduced this subject of love. We'll go to uh, first John chapter four. I'm not going to tell you the verse just yet um, because I want to just prepare the way for uh, uh, well, first John chapter four, verse um, 16. All right, well, let's get a volunteer to read, if you will. Can I get someone to read 1 John chapter 4, verse 16? Amen. When you think of the word love, love is an expression from our souls, and your soul is your mind, your will, your emotion, and your conscience. That is your, that is your soul. So love is an expression. Love is an expression from our soul of devotion, passion, affection, regard for, and admiration toward God and also toward others. Now, there's two types of uh, love. You have human love. Now, human love is object motivated. In other words, human love says, 
I love you because of who you are. I love you because of who you are. That is human love. Divine love is subject motivated. I love you because of who I am. Divine love is greater than human love. Why? Because it is the equality of God's perfect nature. It is the quality of his character. It is the attitude that he commands husbands to have for their wives. It is a mental attitude. It is part of the character and integrity of God. In Ephesians 5, verse 25, husbands are told to love their wives. It is not a love where the subject only thinks of himself, but the subject take interest in others unconditionally. It is the quality of the nature of God. So divine love is a demonstration really of the character of God. It is him voluntarily taking interest or having regard for another. His action is unconditional. You don't require certain conditions to be met. It is undeserved. It is unfailing. It is unending. It is also sacrificial. Before there was a person to love, God was love. Because his love is part of his very own nature. And God is eternal. He existed before any created object, therefore, he didn't need a object in order to love. He existed before there was a created object. Divine love is not inherently part of the nature of humans. It is not eternal or unchanging as God love is. It is not loyal in itself. So I am not, no one in here could say, I am love. <laughs> what you're saying is my inherently nature is that of loving. We will be lying. You're saying it. You're out of fellowship if you say that. Only God can say that. As John brought it out in 1 John 4, 16, that God is love. In other words, love is part of his divine nature. See, humans are motivated by the object. Human love demands something from the object, and it can diminish depending on who and what the object is. It can diminish. Poor celebrities. Oh, my goodness. It also requires a response, reciprocation, and a demonstration of faithfulness from the person. So in other words, if the person don't reciprocate love, if the person don't demonstrate faithfulness, then human love don't love. Human love is a conditional type of love. And what we would do to begin this uh, study on love this month is we'll look at some words in the Bible for love. We'll look at Old Testament word and also a New Testament word. The Old Testament word for love is the Greek word hesed or chesed, and it's spelled H-E-S-E-D. In English, it would be C-H-E-S-E-D, chesed. And it's a noun used a lot of time in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Psalms. It's translated mercy, loving kindness, and steadfast love. Go to Isaiah 54, verse 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Isaiah 
Isaiah 54 10 say, For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness would not be removed from you, and my covenant of peace would not be shaken, say the Lord who has compassion on you. So you see the idea of steadfast love, a love that is unmovable, a love that is unchanging a love that is loyal, a love that is committed, even with knowledge of the failures of the object of your love. That's what loving kindness, Chesed communicates. It is not a feeling or a emotion, but it's an action. See, a lot of people have a misconception of what love is. They think love is an emotion. Well, human love is, but divine love or chested love is an action. It is an action. It is not romantic. It is not in, because if it's, because romantic love demands a, there gotta be something attractive about the object. That's romantic love and that's emotional. But chested type of love is not romantic. It's not infatuation kind of love because guess what? It don't stand up to the test of, uh, human love don't stand up to the test of time. When them wrinkles set in, <laughs> when the wrinkles set, uh, set in, it's, it's over. Infatuation kind of love, which is always motivated by the attractiveness of that person. Yes, it care of the idea of God's unfailing love, even when he is aware of all of our failures. Example of Chesed is when you do something kind for someone, no matter who they are, no matter their status in society, no matter their background or who they are affiliated with, that is Chesed. That is Hesed. Chess is God's consideration and loyalty to others. He shows kind and without expectation of a response and without discrimination, no matter his knowledge of man's failure, he continues to show them steadfast, unfailing devotion and committed love. Psalm 103, go to Psalm 103, verse three to four. Psalm 103, three to four. You know, the more I, when I had first started learning about this love, I'm, I said to myself, who do not want to live for a God that love like this? <laughs> it, it, it caused me to respond. So, you know what? If, if, if he never do another thing for me. And Psalm 103, three through four reads, look at verse, let's read one through four. Verse one say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who crown you with steadfast, Mercy, undying love, unfading love, enduring love, enduring loyalty. See, this is a covenant relationship. And one thing about a covenant relationship, it's a covenant, just what it is. In other words, you can't forfeit that relationship because of changing circumstances then you're not loyal to the covenant. God is in a covenant, not because of the action of the recipient of his love, but he commit himself. He makes himself obligated because of who and what he is to love humans. His love does not depend on action 
of others, but on the faithfulness of himself. God destroyed himself when he appeared to Moses in Exodus 34, 6 through 7. Go to Exodus 34, verse 6 through 7. God destroyed himself here with the attribute of chesed. When he appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai. Can somebody read here for me, please? The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and bound in his steadfast love and forgiveness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. How many of y'all can say to yourself with all honesty, I am slow to anger. That's just who I am. <laughs> inherently, I am slow to anger inherently. I don't need anybody help. <laughs> None of us. But God destroyed himself as love. Chess is a love enduring through all seasons of life. It is a loyal type of love. It is a love we do not possess unless we're born again. Unless we're born of the spirit. See, unsaved people cannot display chess type of love. Because once a believer believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in that believer and creates in that believer a new nature, the very nature of God, the, the believer have the moment he believed in Jesus Christ. But before that, guess what? We did not have a nature that is loving. So we, and, but, but here's another, here's another point here. You can have the very nature of God and be born again and yet not display in your practice Hesit type of love because it demands maturity it demands spiritual maturity we then after being born again must be maturing spiritually in order to progressively practice hesed as a way of life to be devoted to be committed no matter the changing seasons of, of life no matter when the wrinkles set, set in no matter when the, the shape when, when the you lose all your material possession Hesed love remains. It is enduring. It is unfailing. It is steadfast. It is unmovable. Psalm 33, 5. Let's go to Psalm 33, 5. Most love without being born again or mature is selfish love. It's human love. And you can tell when it's human love with the change in seasons in life, then it all comes out what the person is really made of or what the person really possessed. Can someone read, please, Psalm 33 5? <laughs> All right. He, he's in the book of Job. <laughs> Somebody there? Go ahead, please. Yes. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of righteousness. Amen. Now, now, notice right here. I love this verse here. What is this verse saying? Um, anybody? Anybody can comment on this. What, do, what is this verse saying here? Hawkins, what is it saying about the love of God? It says his steadfast love, loving kindness, and mercy is demonstrated when he created the universe. So the universe demonstrates God's steadfast love. In other words, he chose to display 
his grace to all men, knowing in advance what their fare is going to be and what their fares are. He chose to create all things for man's benefit, even aware of all their failures. That's steadfast love. He continues also to maintain this universe and provide for every created thing that is steadfast love. That is loyal love. That is enduring love. That is love that is not conditioned on the objects. It says that he sent his reign on the just and the unjust. God, when he created all things and maintained the universe, God's love is enduring. It don't change when he see men's rebelling against him and see their failure. He don't stop loving. And he shows it every day. He doesn't need us, but we need him. And yet his love never fails. Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Psalm 136, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill, for his loving kindness is everlasting to him who spread out the earth above the waters for his loving kindness is everlasting to him who made the great lights for his loving kindness is everlasting the sun to rule by day for his loving kindness is everlasting the moon and star to rule by night for his loving kindness is everlasting to him who smote the egyptian in their first in their firstborn for his loving kindness is everlasting and brought Israel out from their midst for his loving kindness is everlasting. He didn't bring them out of the midst of the Egyptian slavery because of who and what the Israelite was. He brought them out because of who and what he is, his very own character. With a strong hand and outstretched arm for his loving kindness is everlasting. Verse 13. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder for his loving kindness is everlasting and made Israel pass through the midst of it for his loving kindness is everlasting. But he overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who led his people through the wilderness for his loving kindness is everlasting. And man, he led them through in the midst of all their complaining, their bickering, their rebellion, they're disobedient, and yet he remained loyal to them. To him who small great kings for his loving kindness is everlasting, and slew mighty king for his loving kindness is everlasting. Sahan, king of the Amorite, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Ah, king of Bashan, for his loving kindness is everlasting, and gave their land as an inheritance for his loving kindness is everlasting even a heritage to Israel, his servant, for his loving kindness is everlasting, who remembered us in our low estate, for his loving kindness is everlasting, and has rescued us from our enemies, for his loving kindness is everlasting, who gives food to all flesh, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Speaking of God's uh, loving kindness, we gather today to conduct our memorial service as we reflect on the steadfast love of God. Memorial service communicate an idea or is a time of remembrance. And whenever you remember some, it requires you to have doctrine in your soul it, it required you to have something in your mind in john 3 16 the bible say for god so loved the world that he gave remember love is not an emotion divine love is not an emotion it's an action god so loved the world 
in mercy. He saw our condition and he moved with action and gave his only begotten son. God does not uh, require anything from man when he sent his son. He does all the work. We now look back in this communion service that we're about to observe to the love of God demonstrated through sending his son into the world to pay our debt so that we can have his righteousness and be accepted by him and have a eternal destiny in heaven and escape the lake of fire. At this time, can the deacon pass out the elements started with the bread as we commemorate, uh, have uh, Johnny and uh, Glenn, uh, as we commemorate the love of God in giving us his son to pay the penalty for our sin in spite of our failures. Please hold the elements until all have received the elements and we will partake together. This bread you're about to take represent the humanity of Jesus Christ, his willingness to become a man. He obeyed God the Father perfectly so that he may accomplish the Father's will in providing himself as a perfect sacrifice to pay the penalty for our sins so that we can escape paying that penalty. Let us give thanks for the bread. Father, we're so thankful for this bread. Thank you for the humanity of our Savior. Thank you for uh, giving him the endurance that he needs to go to the cross. And thank you for his humility uh, and becoming a man. Let's take together. We'll pass out the cup now.
This cup represents the spiritual death of Christ. Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, he was separated temporarily from God the Father because all the sins of the world was being poured on him and being judged. He satisfied the righteousness of God, which demands righteousness. He lived a perfect life, but he also satisfied the justice of God and was judged for those who were unrighteous. Through his spiritual death, he removed the sin barrier, the barrier that separated man from God, so that man can be reconciled back to God in a love relationship. It is the shedding of the blood that forgiveness is provided. Forgiveness for past, present, and even sins, the believer committing the future. Let us give thanks for this cup. Father, we're just so grateful for the blood of our savior and thank you for just giving him the grace and the strength he needs to go all the way to the cross and suffer and die and be separated from you so that we would no longer be separated from a relationship with you. So at this time, we give thanks for the shedding of his blood. Let's take it together. At this time, we'll take a uh, 10 minute break and we'll resume our study on love when we come back. Huh? 